Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. It's our monthly unboxing and tech showcase here for all the latest smart home gadgets. I got a ton packed into this one. You're gonna see all kinds of devices. Let's go. I'm being very careful with this box, okay? It's come from a very special person who has a very special place in my heart. I didn't even get a pretty note. That's fine, Lewis. You know what? Fine. It's coming from the United Kingdom. Okay, little hint for you there. Now, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you what this is. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. I hope I'm getting some instructions somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got everything out of the box. Here's what you're getting in the box when you buy from Lewis, the Everything Presence One board. Now, this is your main board here, okay? And it actually has a lot of components on that I'm gonna go through in a moment. We have the millimeter wave sensor. So this is your presence sensor in a lot of cases, or it's gonna spend time kind of after initial uh, sensing of you coming into the space, it's gonna make sure that you're still in the space. I'm actually not too sure what these included pins are for. I think they're additional, just, um, you have a five volt connection pin here. I'm thinking it's an additional set of that. And then you have your PIR sensor. Now the PIR sensor comes with three pins on it and you're going to end up inserting it in to the main board. And you can see there's a space for that. And actually it's labeled here on the board. It says PIR for fast response. So that's the intention. This is gonna know you're coming into the space like your standard motion sensors. Now the main chip on here, it's an ESP32, okay? And then what you have are these two connectors. There's one kind of at the top of the sensor and one down here on the side. Now I read the documentation a little bit and what's gonna happen is you're gonna pick where your millimeter wave sensor is gonna go. In general, uh, they've kind of said you're gonna wanna do this. Now that's going to give you good width or good horizontal distance on the sensor and not as much vertical, which I think you're gonna want in a lot of cases, depending on how you are going to mount this. The other way is obviously the exact opposite. So if I place it in here, there you go. Now, additionally on this board, you actually have temperature and humidity down here in the corner. Then you have a light intensity or a luminance sensor as well. So you actually have quite a bit of different sensors on this. There are two options for powering and getting this device working in your home. There's a USB-C port right here and there's a five volt uh, couple of pins. And like I said, I think that's what I've got right here is an extra set of pins there. That's everything you get. Now, what happens is you take this right here, your box that this came in, and you scan the QR code. And what that does is that brings up the manual. And this has a lot of information. Luce has done a good job explaining all the different components in here. And he's explained that you can print the official case, which apparently I didn't order. All right, now I don't have the case. I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have anything. I should not be doing this, but I have faith that everything's gonna work out just fine. What's gonna go on here? I'm gonna place this in, okay? Easy connection, nothing difficult there. Now I have my millimeter wave sensor in. The next thing I'm gonna do is put my PIR in. I was a little rough there. I don't like what I was doing there. That got a little bit ugly, but we've made good connections. Now, for those of you who are interested in this sensor and all the reviews thus far, all the people I've talked to have absolutely loved this. But understand that right now, it only works with Home Assistant. And that's actually something that I think I could work on with Lewis and I think we could get an edge driver made for Samsung SmartThings or perhaps Hubitat. Either way, we should be able to get that done. So, let's see. So there is a reset and a boot button. I'm supposed to be able to find 
a Wi-Fi signal, and then I should be able to connect it to my home network. So this is not Zigbee, this is not Z-Wave, this is not anything else, it's Wi-Fi. And I actually think that's really smart from uh, Lewis's point of view. I think in the future that's gonna give him a lot of options for updating this sensor, having it work with maybe even something like Matter. So it took a little bit of finagling, but I got onto the web address here. I'm putting in my credentials. I'm hitting save. And now it says it's gonna try to connect to the network. Please give it some time. So it's sitting on my network. And now I just gotta go open up a web browser, connect it to Home Assistant, which actually Lewis is saying should just happen immediately, automatically, and then we can play. So let's play. It would be hard to argue that this isn't one of the best sensors in the world, period. And in fact, technically I would say that it is because the PIR motion sensor instantly knows when you're in the room and it has good range. Plus the presence sensor reacts very fast and it's these two sensors plus the light sensor that can be combined with a few automations to really control your home well. The presence sensor can be tuned through simple setting changes and so can the rest of your sensors and because it's plugged in instead of battery powered you can make configuration and settings changes that make those update fairly quickly. The sensor itself caught me as often as I thought it should and it reacted very fast and of course because this is pairable with home assistant the automations run locally and very quickly. So while this was expensive all the other sensors embedded in this device a great guide for setup and installation and with it being wi-fi connected this sensor has a lot of what people are after today and you're not going to need a lot of them to cover your entire home with great automations. However this is a fairly technical device and there's a few reasons you might not want to get it. The first being it's only home assistant and I asked developers if they would work on it with me to bring it into smart things or habitat and I haven't found anyone yet. The other thing is you're going to need it to be on a static IP so if you don't even know how to do that well you're gonna struggle to get this working and stay working in your home because every time it becomes disconnected it'll choose another IP and home assistant might not find it at that point. The other reason people might not want this sensor is because they'll be afraid of it and the reason I say that is because you'll need to really think out how you want your smart home controlled. What I did is I used the PIR sensor to turn on devices and then I used the occupancy after having it be on for a while to turn it into a lower setting with some of my lighting in the room. You might want to think about it that way or you might really want to go in depth, produce scripts and really build a smart, smart home. Hey there, guess what's in this box? It's a robot vacuum and a mop. Oh, okay, but seriously, this is called Narwhal Frio. I'm gonna get it opened up and show you what this is all about. Okay, first things first, let's do a little cut. Now, I actually have the original Narwhal. And it's easily been one of my favorite robot vacuums, plus it was a mop. But Frio has a lot of upgrades. I think I gotta, I think I gotta do this. I think I gotta stand up. Hey, guess what? I'm wearing pants. So here's the actual robot. I'm gonna pull everything out of here. Whoop. And there is quite a bit. We got our little sweepers in here. And we got more of that. And we gotta pull this big sheet out. And look at this. Okay, see? Narwhal robot vacuum and mop. First use, oh. It's a big quick start guide. I'm gonna have to keep that around. Ooh, right there. This is the base itself. Now the base is gonna take me uh, some doing to get it out of here. So bear with me. Okay. Woo. We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh bulbous it's got a belly on it oh this thing is this is beefy 
There isn't a lot of components in the box, actually. We've got the big base here. This is the, the whole station. It'll return here. There's water, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that's gonna go in here, including the robot vacuum itself. Now, this is Narwhal Frio, and uh, you know, the differences are already showing up. These were not installed on the previous version. I had to install them myself. It looks like the only thing I need to install here are these two and they're color-coded uh, little sweepers. They're color-coded, so the purple's on the, on the right here. And the idea with Frio that I think is so freeing, and I think that's the point of the name, is that it's gonna switch automatically between mop and vacuum. So inside of the box, what you get, big quick start guide right there. You get a little pamphlet. I'm not sure what's in here other than, oh look, a bigger user guide. You get the robot itself and two sweepers. On the bottom, there is a removable beater bar. Okay, so that's just the top and then or that's just the, the compartment and then you'll be able to remove that should you ever have any issues, you wanna get it cleaned out better. And then uh, the mopping pads and uh, the other thing is you're gonna be able to take those off. They're actually Velcro, I can feel the Velcro coming. And that, that's about it. That's about all you ever need to worry about with the actual physical device. I do have to remove this little thing. As with most robot vacuums, there is a spot to replace the filter. Quite easy to remove uh, and put the new filter in. Plus, we can take out the entire uh, compartment here, which will hold all of the dust and stuff that Narwhal is gonna pick up as it goes throughout your home. And then it's a simple, there it goes, uh, way to get that dumped out, basically. And then that's your filter right there that you're going to replace every so often. Inside of the compartment, I like when they do this, there is a little spot for this tool. So this allows you to cut out things that get stuck in the robot vacuum itself. And then there's a little brush to kind of push things around in there. And it's just a little compartment. That was the sounds of tech. I love the sounds of tech. Now, these things, if you don't know, <laughs> I gotta move this thing, excuse me. Now, these things, if you don't know, they are full of sensors. Uh, I've taken a few of these apart, actually, with my kid. It's, it's always a fun little adventure. But, you know, there's lots of little sensors. There's a pressure sensor here. Basically, it's gonna feel when it's running into things. You can see on the front there, uh, there's a couple of, well, they look like uh, sensors, actually, of a different kind. And then this on the top usually indicates LiDAR on most of your robot vacuum. So just something for you to identify for yourself. Now this one actually looks really amazing around the edges here of that uh, little sensor. It lifts up in order to give you access to the robot. And you know what I'll say is this is incredibly smooth. Uh, sometimes when you're working with these, yeah, they, they can feel quite rigid and, and like they will struggle to move around your home. But this is like, wow, actually. Uh, this unit is quite heavy. I will tell you that. This is not a light robot vacuum, but with all of the functions on it, it's kind of what we would expect. Okay, now let's move in the base. And the base is where a lot of the magic happens for robot vacuums. Now with Narwhal itself, there's a lid you can lift up. And then inside of there, we actually have a couple of containers. Now these two containers are for uh, the clean and the dirty water. So you're really just gonna be filling one up and then you're gonna be taking the other one and dumping it out. That's for the mopping function. There's two little handles on the side of this, which is really quite important. And on the back, you've actually got the component or the compartment for power. The other thing that's really different about Frio is there's a whole touch screen on the top of this. 
you're going to be able to control the robot. You're going to be able to send it to do things. Uh, but for the most part, I think honestly, this one, it's going to be left in Frio mode in a lot of cases. And that's just going to make it easy on all of us. That's actually what the inside of the compartment looks like because we've got a bunch of other stuff in here. I would assume a power cable. Well, isn't that nice? I got some lemon and basil specially formulated floor cleaner and that is something to think about with you know these specialty robot vacuums uh, they do usually recommend their own floor cleaner so you kind of got to think about that i don't know what this little widget is and i got my power cable that's it so at this point i'm ready to go let's get this set up let me show you how it works and then we'll talk about the performance that we're getting out of frio Narwhal Frio has been the best robot vacuum I've ever had, and with its included mop, it is the first one that I can tell you has truly saved me time. I've had it for over a month now, and I put it through some of the most rigorous testing. And while it isn't perfect, its mop is excellent, as you can control the amount of water and detergent that's coming out of Narwhal. Plus, it swings its back towards the edges in your home to make sure it gets as much as it can. Its vacuuming is excellent too, as the sweepers run at different speeds and are specifically designed to push material in front and to the middle of the vacuum so it runs over and sucks up all the debris around your home. You can also control the suction power and except for the maximum suction power mode, Narwhal is extremely quiet. For the price, this will be worth it for some people and not worth it for others. And I say that because you can't map a second level at this time and it doesn't auto empty the dustbin compartment. However, it does decide when to clean the mops and it gets them very clean. It pulls the dirty water out and automatically brings in clean water and the detergent. It truly is a set and forget device because it shows you all of the maintenance timelines you have and it notifies you when you have anything to do. Otherwise, it just quietly goes about its business and it gets the job done. Stay tuned for a full review of Frio because I put it through some tests that you're not gonna believe. This is gonna be a good one. I, I am super excited for this. Like I might just make videos just because of this. Now I don't wanna ruin the surprise for you. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do a reveal. Hey, whoa, four things. Okay, now I have two of the official micro SD cards from Wise, but probably more exciting to you is the Wise Cam Pan V3, or maybe the Wise Cam OG. Now I seem to have two and I'm hoping one of these is the other telephoto, but let's start with, what should we start with? I'm not sure, I wanna start with the Wisecam OG. Now, these are gonna look a lot like your original Wisecams in a lot of cases, but the technology that Wise has started to put in their cameras is significantly improved. So even if it is an OG camera, yeah, there's a big difference here. Oh my gosh, I think each of these boxes has other stuff. Okay, okay, okay. I got everything. I don't need this one. Let's put that over there. So we've got two different versions of Wisecam OG. Here's the telephoto. This comes with a three by optical lens in it. And this is the Wisecam OG. Now let's start with the OG. And what I'll tell you about this camera, it has a really, really different mounting option. And that's sitting here. Here's our iBacked Wise quick start guide, mounting hardware, Wise adapter with a USB A port, a full Brian wingspan cable, six, uh, six feet, I believe, that cable. It's a micro USB to USB A. And of course, we have the camera itself. Now let's get into this bad boy. Let's go for the sounds of tech. Yeah, that was pretty good, but you know. Now, I have uh, the, the version two, and you can see that the Wisecam V2, you know, it's looking a lot like that. that it's, it's a more familiar looking lens anyways, it's not exact, than say the Wisecam V3. So, you know, I, I think that's what they're hearkening back to with the OG 
uh, in the title. But this mount that's come on the device is very different. And again, they've upgraded a lot of things here in their technology. Now, the first thing is you're getting this cable extension. This is helping you with what is an IP65 rated indoor slash outdoor camera. So it's ready to go outside, but that's why you have this so that when you're plugging in the cable, which you will get 100% of the time wrong for the whether it goes up or down, when you plug that in, you're getting a pretty good seal there. Now the mount is also uh, something, you could twist this off, you could put on your own mount here if you'd like to do that. And you've got this extra plate at the bottom. So I've got a little figuring to do there. So just looking around the camera, it comes with an integrated spotlight. That's obviously very different than actually most of the cameras. Like even the, the V3 here started to come with that, but lots of the older cameras didn't have that. You had to buy it as an attachment. The speaker looks significantly upgraded from some of the older versions of Wise cams. And we do still have on the bottom, the slot for a micro SD card. This keeps you out of subscriptions if you don't want them. There's still some reasons that you might end up wanting a subscription with WISE, uh, some of their advanced detection features, and there is a setup button on the bottom here. There's kind of two components to this mount that they've given us in the box. So first of all, you can bend, you can twist, you can go all around how you see fit there. And then you have what's just kind of a pad that sits and these have some kind of sticky foot pads on it. But this second part of it is obviously your mounting plate. This is how you can screw into the wall with the mounting screws or the mounting hardware that you have. And that's very easy to connect in here. You just align it and you kind of push it in. Now we'll set this up in a minute, but uh, let's get the telephoto open so we can have a look at that. And then I'll show you the wild, wild thing I got here. So this is the telephoto version. It has a three by zoom lens in it. Now in this one, you're gonna get very similar stuff. I got my little eye backed sticker, my quick start guide. Here's my mounting hardware. I'm sure it's exactly the same. Here's my silica gel that I should be very careful not to leave on the floor. And I've got my adapter, my USB adapter, my cable, and I've got the camera itself. Get into this one and see how different it looks. It's time for the sounds of tech. So really very similar in terms of a design here, but you can see a little bit of difference. There's a little bit like a purple or slash, purple slash blue ring around the edge of the lens here or around the, the edge of the whole lens uh, module. Now uh, this you can definitely see this is a very different looking lens compartment there. There's some depth to that that just isn't here. But the other thing is there's no spotlight on the telephoto. So again, these are gonna work really well in conjunction with each other. Now the other thing and what's become so exciting with these two is our third box. And it all relates to this little tab on the top that says Wise on it on both of these cameras. I can actually pull that tab off okay now let me show you what that does now this is a very inexpensive add-on with these cameras and what it is is a little mount that goes on the top here click that in and now you've got this opportunity to take off the mount on your second camera you guys see where i'm going right let's hope in editing we can make this faster than i'm doing it There you go. Now, not only could you use your own mount on the bottom here, you could do all kinds of different things with it. You're now ready to have two cameras, one with a telephoto lens pointing at your object. You could switch in a live view between these two. You can pair these cameras together. If you wanted, you could use two of these, have them going in different directions. It is essentially endless. And you know, just to, to give you guys here the cost for all of this, it's $58. That's wild. 
But let's find out how good they look because I think we're gonna see a little bit of an older style look to these cameras. I think that's the OG component, but I'm really interested to see how they perform. The new OG and OG telephoto cameras are great as a pairing, but it does take a little bit of work to get this right. The picture in picture feature in the Wise app is the easiest part as it only takes seconds to turn that on. What's harder to get right is the mounting situation and to make sure that your telephoto is pointed at the right spot and is capturing people or the objects that you'd like. It's almost easier to separate the two in terms of mounting, but it sure does look neat when you pair the two together. As I was mounting it outside, I even had a neighbor come up and ask me about it. Yeah? So what, what are you putting up here? Well, so these are called Wise Cams. What was interesting about that mounting is I was using the WISE lamp socket to power the two cameras together. These aren't quote unquote compatible with WISE lamp socket because you can't control the light through the camera. But if you put WISE bulbs in the socket as well, I think you'll have everything you need and it sure is a nice way to power two cameras if you can hide the cables. I think at this point a micro SD card is required for WISE cameras. It allows me to configure recordings in the way that I'd like. I put both cameras on continuous recording to that SD card and I use the pictures of the events as my markers to go between the SD card and the event and then I can pull the recordings as I need and the recordings look every bit as good as most of the Wise Cams with only the new Wise Cam Pro V3 looking substantially better. The three times telephoto lens is a really interesting feature and I think a lot of people will just buy that camera for some of those higher up camera mounts. The resolution won't be perfect at just 1080p and with the frame rate at night dropping to 10 frames per second it won't provide the best security footage on the planet but it will provide what most people need which is good footage of how an event transpired. Overall, I like both of these cameras and the pricing is fantastic. Now this, if it is what I think it is, and it is, was kind of a gift to myself, but it was actually recommended, I, I believe it was Black Adder on Twitter. You know, he's always testing local devices, what he can add to Tuya, what he can add to a different, a couple of different systems like Home Assistant. And this is a Zigbee version of a breathing presence sensor. So what are we gonna be able to do with this? I have no idea. Okay, we're in. Let's see, it's a fairly small, not, uh, not super intimidating device. And it says hotel on the box. So I imagine a hotel could use something like that, place it on the wall and maybe get some data about whether or not people are in the space. There's a disconnect here for me. Yeah, so that does not look like it. That does, but wh why is that on the box? And why is that there? I think maybe there's just two models of this thing and I, I bought one. That's what it looks like. But I can't read that side of things, so I'm gonna read this side. Now what you get in the box, more importantly, strange sticker, it looks like QA, QC, actual stickers that you can put, I'm sure, on the back of this, and then just a little bit of a power cable. Then you get the manual and the device itself. Now the device itself has a single button on the bottom and then it has that micro USB port that you're gonna use with this cable. So here's everything that this says it can do. It looks like I've got a ceiling mount this thing actually, which I don't know whether I can do that here. Maybe I can do that here, but <laughs> it says fretting detection, which is small movements such as hand lifting, hand flicking, and hand turning. Motion detection, all those things. Presence detection, so if you're just standing or sitting or even squatting still, it can detect you. Distance measurement, illuminance detection, so there's gotta be, yeah, there's some little, little holes on the front. I thought those were lights, but maybe it's light. And it looks like the range, you know, be about uh, one to seven meters. Now that's gonna depend on the height of the ceiling. It's kind of got this kind of shape that it can detect in. So, I mean, honestly, with some 
something like this. First of all, I've got to find a hub that I can connect it to. Can I even find that? I do have a Zigbee to you hub. So hopefully I can get it connected there and then we'll try some other hubs and we'll see what we can get for data out of this bad boy. This was an extremely inexpensive device and when compared to the every smart home presence sensor, it's not perfect, but only because it doesn't have a motion sensor paired with it. It's actually remarkably good at identifying how far away someone is from the device, and it was even able to track me as I moved behind walls. The automation options in the Smart Life app were enough to allow control of other devices in that app, like the lighting. However, you won't find that this presence sensor shows up in Amazon or Google or smart things. So you're not going to have those options for automation with a sensor. It does require the Zigbee hub that I've shown in previous videos, but the connectivity to that hub is really strong and the configuration options in the smart life app really help you to fine tune this sensor to be useful in your home. It's something I can surprisingly recommend if you have a lot of products in the smart life app already. Now for the most part, for the last few months I've known what was coming but I got no clue here it's got a funny shape so I feel like there's a couple things in this box or bag package <laughs> really struggling here Wow oh now I know what it is okay let's go with the small one let's let's start small the small ones never get, well, something. It's never as exciting for the small ones, right? This is the Govi Smart Air Monitor. Now, Govi has started to expand out. And actually, you know, when we talk about Govi as a company, the first thing I got from them was like a, a temperature and a humidity sensor. It was just Bluetooth. It didn't have all the connectivity options to all the other, like the voice assistants and everything that they do today. So this is kind of harkening back, but some pretty big uh, improvements here. Now, I don't know why, but it says laser. This thing's got laser beams. Okay, so we've got the air monitor itself, the air quality monitor. We've got a couple of user manuals. We've got a power brick. This one is two amps, two amps at five volts. And we've got a fairly long cable here because there is a USB port in the back of this. That's a fairly nice looking air quality monitor. Let's just plug it in and see what happens. Now, I do have, as we get her uh, booting up here, I do have some sounds of tech to do. 66 Fahrenheit. So it looks like uh, there's a little button on the top here and in the back you can see some of the internals. It actually looks really interesting. You can, you get a little bit of a cloth in here and actually I don't know what that is right there. That's going to take me some time to figure out so I'll have to write that in the titles. You guys see the titles when I do these videos, right? Like we put a lot of information out there. But you're also getting uh, PM 2.5 at the top here and when I press the button I think that's going to be a time clock here on that. And then you have the temperature and the relative uh, humidity there. Now before I go into the app I just want to see if that's another USB port. No, I didn't think so. I don't know what that hole is. Now, this is a little before Matter compatibility. It is coming to Govi's lineup, starting with the M1 strip that I showed you guys a couple of months ago. So I'm just gonna add a device here and I'm gonna search for air and find the air quality monitor. So it's just asking me to click the button to pair and now I get to name the device. Now it's searching for Wi-Fi throughout my home Google Home's already told me that it's it's uh, on my Wi-Fi. Let me roll through this device and I'll let you know how good it is, but it's already giving me all readings. I can see that there's a big chart feature and uh, I gotta do a little update here 
And we gotta get this opened. The Govi Smart Air Quality Monitor is great as long as you're not expecting it to work with Amazon or Google or another system. The automation options you get to start another Govi device in their own app is really nice, but the device doesn't integrate with Google Home at all at this point, and even with Amazon, all you can do is request information about the device. Right now, it's not showing up as an air quality monitor in Amazon's app either, so there's just not a lot to do with it outside of Govi. But the real worth here is the display, which is completely configurable in terms of brightness and when the display is even turned on. The sensors are accurate when compared to other sensors in my home, as long as you don't cover either the small one on the side of the device or anything on the back. The display looks nice and I like the cloth finishing on the inside of the loop. Plus the power requirements aren't large, so if you wanted to just plug it into a USB port somewhere, you could do that. Given that it has a temperature sensor, this pairs really well with one of Govi's smart heaters. Plus you could buy one of their humidifiers to deal with the humidity in a space, or an air purifier to deal with that particulate. And as long as you plan to use it that way, then this is a great little sensor. Okay, now this is a smart heater from Govi. And one of the crazy things with them is they stuck some lights in these in this latest range of smart heaters. And I actually think that these are gonna be great little devices. So I, I reached out to Govi, I asked them, hey, you wanna send me that? Your air quality monitor, and here we are. In the box, got a little quick start guide. It's telling me some of the buttons and some of the controls, how to get this thing working right away. So here's everything you get in the box, and I gotta tell you, it's mostly paper. So there's a there's a thank you card telling you a little bit about Govi. Here's the user manual for the whole device. You get the quick start guide that was in the top of the whole thing, and you get a plug safety precautions. Now there's a PTC ceramic heater, very nice style of heater. They put out great. Uh, kind of ambient heat, and then just the fan is really used to disperse the heated, uh, the heated air throughout your space. I get a really, really good sounds of tech here. Yeah, it's the stuff dreams are made of. Now that's a really long cable. That's six feet, at least six feet, and we have the ability to spin on the base here, so it's going to be able to move. There's some little feet on the bottom. I think that's really a nice touch. It doesn't feel very tippy, although you could knock it over, but it has tip protection. It also has some thermal protection. Now on the top, there's clearly a lot of controls, but it's a smart heater. So we're gonna have more than just the controls that are on here. I would also say, you know, that's a very nice design. It's, it's not big, like I'm holding that with one hand. And yes, ladies, I have very large hands. Nice. But, uh, you know, in the same breath, they're not like Shaq's hands. So it's fairly small, it's not a huge, heater and I think this is gonna fit in a lot of spaces really nicely. I love the rounded design and I get a handle back here to carry it around with. Now usually I can't do the demo here because you know it's a lot of wattage through well what is essentially the third power bar in a series. Do as I say don't do as I do. Don't do three power bars in series and then connect to a heater okay guys. Well, let's just start with the light. You gotta love Govi. Now there, you can see it, it's all along the bottom. You gotta love that. It's already shifting. Let's see what else we can do. Can I, okay, light on, light on, light off, light on, light off, light on. Okay, let's turn her on. <laughs> There's a lot of heat coming out of this instantly and it, it does have a cool down it has a safety cool down so it's going to sit here and just blow out like I turned it off already but it sits there it blows out till it gets down to a cold enough temperature and then it will stop so that's a good indication for you to maybe not touch the device until it's 
it's done that little sequence. Now the buttons on the top, you have a lot of different controls here, but unfortunately I can't do this here because I got too much in series. So we got to do this on a tent, uh, test bench and we'll get it set up. Let me show you what this thing is all about. This is one of three versions of a smart heater that Govee sells. And I have to say, that I've really enjoyed this. It's one of the only options today for safer heating of a space as it has a number of different types of protection on it, like tip over protection, the long run time protection, and the overheating protection. Plus the ability to lock the mode or the entire device with the application, or even with the buttons on the heater means that you can keep this really secure. Integration with Google was extremely good as I could get almost anything done through a voice assistant command. That also meant that I could use it in routines, at least from the action side. What I did there was I used the custom action feature and just put in the same Google Assistant commands that I had found working. Integration with Amazon was a little harder from a voice assistant standpoint because I could only get the device to turn on and off today. But after that, I was able to use routines to completely configure this device how I'd like. I could be using other air quality sensors in their app or temperature sensors on things like the Echo speakers to start a routine and to turn on and off my heater and that included any mode or configuration I would like. The options in the Govee app are really good, although if you're expecting a lot of lighting effects, there are only a few, and with the light being fairly small on this model, I don't think it needed a lot. But the ones that it has look really nice, and this is a bit of an improvement over any other heater I have in terms of its looks. So I'm really excited to have this in my home and to pair it with some other temperature sensors to keep my space warm and cozy. This one's already out of the box. It's the Blink Video Doorbell, and it's their Sync Module 2. I need my trusty knife to get in here, but you know, Blink, the future of Blink, I think, wait, that rhymes. It could be a little bit interesting here going forward. We know Amazon is doing some cuts at their company and I kind of think that Blink could be in a little bit of trouble, but this has been getting really good reviews. Now, this one can be installed wired or wire free, which is a really great option. And the sync module is really important because that allows you to store recordings in your home. Gotta say, I like how it looks in the packaging. Like this is pretty nice looking. Let me get everything out of the box and then we'll chat. He goes for the box toss. That's probably it is. Yeah. 50 from the judges. Yeah, that did. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Here's what you get in the box. Of course, we have the video doorbell itself that I can do the sounds of tech with. Uh, that was weak. You can see the wired pins in the back and then there is a compartment back here. I'll show you in a minute. And then you get the Sync Module 2. Now the Sync Module 2 has a power port, a micro USB on the bottom and it's got a USB on the side. So I'll have to figure that one out. You get two different mounting plates. Here's the standard one and here's your wedge as they like to call it. It looks like these two will still go together in one form or another if you are using that wedge, so you still need both. You get some power cables and a power adapter. This is a micro USB, so this is gonna be for the sync module. I sync. Yeah, that was a joke, a pun. Then you get some of your wiring hardware. Here's what you're gonna need to wire in to your existing doorbell if you have that. You get a little mounting, uh, this is just a mounting guide, and then you can see the little tool that they're giving you there for, I think, popping open this compartment, but like, I did that. There are some additional mounting hardware, some wire nuts in here, some little screws for putting it into your home, and then, I don't know what those are for yet. And a couple of AA batteries. Now they're saying you're gonna get two years of battery life on that? I doubt it, guys. I think maybe if nobody ever came to your door. And the last thing is your little manual here. So from the front, you know, everything looks really great on this doorbell. I like the positioning. I don't feel like this is too big. The button's very simple. It does have a mechanical component to it. So 
you know, over time that might degrade or break down or just simply break. But uh, the other things, you know, when you get down to the bottom here, that's where you're gonna use this tool to get it off of the mounting plate. So the mounting plate has a little catch at the bottom and then that's how you're gonna get it on there. I think if I do this, let's see. Okay. Ah, oh, it's on there now. So uh, I just put the mounting plate on the back here and, and now we're, we're totally stuck on there. So I gotta get my demounting, dismounting tool. <laughs> it's gonna be hard for me to do this. Oh, I think I popped it, yeah, there you go. So that, that's just the mechanism. You're gonna need that. It's a little bit of a different one. Many of the other ones are just a pin. So I kind of like that that's a little bit different. Somebody with a pin is not gonna be able to get right in there. Now, you would need that or something similar to get to the battery compartment back here. So that's where you're gonna fit in your two double A's. Oh, put in the two double A's and we got red light. Feels very Darth Vader-y. Now while that's blinking Darth Vader lights at me, I'm gonna plug in the sync module. Now I got blue and I got red. <laughs> it's over Anakin, I have the high ground. So I've got my blinking lights and I think it's time to get this set up. So let's find out how this works together. The Blink Video Doorbell is expensive, but you're gonna run into a few issues and I couldn't speak through the mic on my Fire TV, though I could do it on an Echo Show. The sync module doesn't come with onboard storage, so you need to put some form of USB storage on it or else you will definitely end up with a subscription. The view of my porch doesn't go low enough to see packages, which is different from my Nest Video Doorbell and the quality of recordings are not quite as good as that doorbell either. And I would say it's just not as good as my Ring video doorbell either. I'm not getting motion notifications through my Echo speakers, even though I've configured that in the Amazon app, but I am getting doorbell ring notifications through those same speakers. And if I want, I can use a Blink mini camera as a chime as well as those echo speakers. And despite the sync module being in my home, I am finding that as soon as I try to start more than one stream of the camera, I can't bring up the feed. And that can mean that when the doorbell rings, if I'm using an Amazon routine to bring the feed up on a device, then I won't be able to see who is at the door when I'm away from my home. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but the installation is simple and the device itself does most of what you're gonna want want from a video doorbell. I can work around the subscription and I can even work around that routine issue by enabling and disabling routines when we leave the home. But it's not quite as convenient as some of you would have hoped with the price being so good. Cash on delivery, hey? Yeah, I did have to pay for this. Let's get technical. And by technical, I mean, we have gotta get our knife in there rip her apart. Ugh. Ugh. Now, this is the AOTech Multi-Sensor 7. The Multi-7 sensor has a ton on it. Motion, light, vibration, humidity, temperature, and UV. And it's the improved version of the 6. Now, right off the bat, I mean, that looks wild to me. They didn't have all of this on the previous version. This is a Z-Wave sensor, okay? So you're gonna need a Z-Wave hub to go along with this. I use Samsung SmartThings. There's also things like Hubitat, Home Assistant, and I'm sure this is gonna work with a number of other hubs. One of the really interesting things about this specific sensor and the previous version as well, is that it's not just a battery powered sensor. And I think that's something that holds a lot of people back actually is, you know, you gotta go. You always have to think about replacing batteries, but not necessarily with this. And if you do the right cabling work or you just have the right type of outlet, 
can actually plug this one into power indefinitely and that can really help to lower your overall just complexity of your smart home. So here's what you get in the box. Actually quite a bit for just a sensor. You get a couple of manuals. I think this one's just regulatory information, but that's an actual manual. And you can find a better manual online for all of AOTech's products. Now you get a sticker, a mounting sticker, and then you have the basic mounting plate and the the sensor itself. Now you get two batteries in here. They're CR123As. And I believe if this is the same as the six, you're gonna get a couple of years out of this sensor. Now it depends how often you're doing polling, which is something you can configure. So if you're constantly asking for the UV, uh, the UV rating or the humidity or the temperature or all those things that this can sense, well, you're gonna drain the battery faster. You get a power cable here. It's a micro USB to A. Obviously, you could power this a number of different ways with that in there. You get a couple of screws in case you want to mount this. And the reason you get that is because this is kind of a different mounting plate that you're getting in here. You can actually orient this in a lot of different ways. So this uh, extra piece screws in to the back plate and then you can orient and you can put a couple of screws in here. So that would allow you to mount this in a lot of different ways and get this done right because if you want the motion detection to work right, this is gonna guide you on exactly how. And it's usually seven feet in the air. It's gotta be to kind of get things right. With this doing as much as it is and with the way that SmartThings used to work with the sixth version of this sensor, I can tell you that there was a pretty good delay in getting motion detection responses. But AOTech has lots of their edge drivers now available for their sensors, for their devices, with smart things. So this really helps it become something that is much better using Samsung smart things. And it's something I think I'm gonna be able to recommend. But let's plug this into smart things and see what happens. The AOTech Multisensor 7 isn't a huge upgrade over the Multisensor 6, but for smart things users, the Edge Driver program and the Edge Driver I can use with this sensor does mean a pretty big upgrade. That's because this sensor becomes local and no longer requires the internet. That does make automations a little bit quicker with this sensor, but from an overall perspective, it just means better connectivity and less issues with the internet going down in your home. I do like all of the routines options that I get. Every single sensor on this device allows me to start a routine in a number of ways. And the graphs on the main page of the device allow me to diagnose issues in my home, which I'm going to use to find some of those cold spots during this winter. Now, I think we should end this debate once and for all. Is Die Hard with Bruce Willis a Christmas movie or not? I'm gonna go on record saying it is. Now, this is a Christmas package. It's specifically from Sinope. I've shown you uh, like the thermostats last month and a few months before that, I showed you their water valve. Now, this is a specific kit that they're selling. It's called Smart Heating by Sinope. So it looks like we get three things in this box and actually I'm kind of excited to see the Sinope Gateway because that allows you to buy a lot of uh, Zigbee devices and it allows you to buy a lot of other products that they have that you probably don't know about like this little boy right here. So this is a Zigbee smart plug. You can see it's kind of wider than a lot of the versions out there. It's got the three prongs, it's 15 amps and basically three prong, the three prong here out the side, you got a little button on the front, but it's Zigbee. So, you know, number one, I'm gonna test which hubs that works with. It should work with SmartThings and Hubitat. We're also getting two thermostats from Sinope. Now these are the Zigbee versions of the electric thermostat. Now those are compatible with 
the baseboard heaters, convectors, forced fan convectors, and radiant ceiling heating. So quite a number of different ones. And because they're Zigbee, I think again, we've got some compatibility with some other hubs, but I gotta look that up. Now those units I showed you last month, they are fantastic looking. I think they, all, the whole series is simple, but you know, it's still doing what you want out of a th smart thermostat. Now this is the gateway. Uh, I mean, it looks a lot like any other gateway you've had before, except it's completely black and I get to do the sounds of tech. Yeah. So we've got a nice logo on the back there. Nice logo on the front and then we have an ethernet port and a power port and a couple of buttons on the front. There's a web and a Wi-Fi. I don't know what that web button's for. Gotta find that out too. I don't know what this thing is. That looks like a holder for the neat. Oh, look at that. That's pretty nice. I like that. You get an ethernet cable, power adapter. And then of course, cause we've got two Zigbee thermostats. We've got the hardware we need for getting those into our home. And then just a ton of guides. Now, this is obviously a kit that you could buy from Sinope. It's getting you started. And I like that you're getting this gateway. I have a lot to check out with this because yeah, lots of these products, they work with Hubitat and smart things, but it's nice to get the direct Zigbee connection happening here. So I'm excited to try this out. Now I'm not gonna be able to install two thermostats. This is a good overall kit for someone who is replacing their HVAC system because not only do you get two thermostats, but you get the hub and a smart plug as a bit of a throw in. Using that hub, which did take me a few tries to get properly set up, you can connect all of Sinope's Zigbee products directly. And then in many cases, you can make connections to smart things, Hubitat, Amazon, and Google. There are some drawbacks to the hub though. If your goal is to connect eventually to smart things or Hubitat as devices like the smart plug won't come in. So it's not everything coming from NebiWeb over to those hubs. The smart plug shows energy consumption if it's directly connected to Sinope's hub. And I've shown you before how the thermostats show a lot of data and give you a lot of ways to conserve energy too. So this is a great starter pack to bring you into this system. And as I've shown before, with the valves and the leak sensors, there's a lot of good compatibility. You just need to make sure that the compatibility you're after is gonna be there if you're using another hub. We have a couple of accessories for our Google Nest Cam battery. Now the first one here is a three in one floodlight. It's a charger and a mount for your camera. And this is obviously a solar panel that's gonna go with this camera as well. So. Let's open up and see what we've got. Now these are from a company called Wasser, Wasserstein. Now these guys, I've been talking to them for a little bit. They have quite a number of accessories, not just for Google stuff, for Ring, for Wise, a couple other companies. That's not a small floodlight. <laughs> Inside of the box, you're gonna get quite the manual. A Little bit of safety information there. Some mounting hardware. Looks like you get quite a bit to go with this, which is kind of expected. I have this little pad. I'm not even sure if that's necessary, but it looks like it's got a sticker on it. Just a little foam piece. And of course, the actual mount itself. Now, a couple of things that I like right off the bat. I can go pretty much all the way around with both of these lights. They feel pretty strong too, like in terms of a physical mount. I don't think I'm gonna break this. It actually feels a little better than Google's version did. There is a little motion sensor on the front and then I do like that they've labeled these wires back here. So they're trying to make it very easy from an installation perspective to get this done. Now it took a few minutes to read what's all going on here. So these wires, obviously they're gonna connect to your existing wires in your home. And then this will be connected in to the port here on the Nest camera. It's such a strange connector that Google gave us for this one. The other thing you're gonna need is the wall plate that you get with this camera. 
I don't have it in front of me right now. I'm not too sure where it is. So I gotta get that installed on there, but then you're gonna have some articulation. What, what would we call that? You're gonna be able to move it up and down a little bit and it's gonna be stuck here and it's gonna be powered 100% of the time. The installation itself for this doesn't seem too difficult other than the electrical side of things. But let's get on to the solar panel and see what we get in here. I wonder, could you combine these two things? Like, is that possible? I don't think so, right? It all fell out. Oh boy. So what you get in the box, here is a manual. You're gonna get some mounting hardware and I'm not too sure what these things are just yet, but they look interesting. Then you get the mounting hardware. It's got some up and down rotation and the mounting hardware goes into the back of the solar panel uh, like that. And then you're gonna attach to the wall here. Now, obviously you get the solar panel itself, which is quite large and you get the quite a long cable too to connect again into this. Now I couldn't figure out how this was all gonna fit in here and then you were gonna be able to orient this right because I thought, okay, we're against the wall and that's it. But, okay, I've got that kind of action and then I've got that kind of action too. So uh, they are giving you some different options for getting this oriented a little differently than you might have originally expected. But otherwise, this is just gonna connect in and keep, hopefully, your Nest Cam battery charged forever. We had some amazing products released in 2022, and I thought it would be great to compile all of the best smart home tech into one video just like this video today. You check that out, it's up on screen. You'll be able to find a ton of products that are gonna work in your smart home this year and be the best thing you bring in because they've had some time on the market. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.